up in the Tattle Tales. How y'all doing? And welcome to the Real Housewives of Potomac Season 7, Episode 7 Recap. Baby, let's just get right into this. Robin is trash. Robin's trash. And if I was her, I'd be worried a little bit more about what's happening to Juan. Because before you know, baby, you won't need that prenup. You're going to have to ask Juan to say that he'll never go for spousal support. Giselle is still the same thing, even though she did surprise me in this episode. See, I expect Giselle to be a hot pile of trash, but her outfit was actually pretty cute. That white booty and those things. I said, look at Giselle having a stylist. Baby, you better stay in that outfit for the rest of your days. But knowing Giselle, she'll be repeating that outfit in 2032. She'll find a way to make it tacky. Wendy has been doing pirouettes, circling around the girls. Lastly, before we get to this recap, don't forget, I am going to be live with the Grace Report and Layla, Layla, Layla tells it all. That's right. I'm subbing in for the Real Housewives of Potomac recap. It's going to be live 12 p.m. I'm sorry, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time this Monday. You're probably watching it on Monday right now. If you can't catch the live, please, my tattletales, go ahead and catch the play pack and let them know that tattletales are in the house. All right, let's get into this. First of all, let's open with this thing because there's so many people to drag. And Sharice, mm, such a disappointment. And can we stop acting like Wendy don't work for CNN, Fox News, and John Hopkins University? See, here's the thing. I know the girls don't run in the same circles as Wendy. And that's not even being a superior, uh, 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 having a superior air. John Hopkins University is ranked number, it's not Ivy League, but it's ranked number seven out of all the universities in the US, number seven. Harvard gets in usually num number one, two, or three. It is number seven. It has prestige, it has status. Wendy is the youngest tenured professor and the first African-American professor. Don't play with her. Her receipts are deep and long. Y'all trying to act like this woman broke a tenured professor at the number seven university in the United States of America? Y'all, it has an 11% acceptance rate. The average GPO of the GPA of the students that get accepted are 4.0 and have to be in the top percentiles of the S SAT. You better stop it. John Hopkins, I know these girlies aren't into the education circles, is a big effing deal. However, that said, let's get into the first where there where this weirdness start. Let me just be the first to say, me is a weirdo. She needs to stop with the plastic surgery because she's starting to look like the mask. Again, every like I'm not gonna get on my back about injectables and how they are the demon, but she's having a conversation with Peter Thomas, another weirdo. When what are is Peter Thomas talking about he has beef with a woman? over a business deal. This lets you know that Peter is not a businessman because I would never do business with Peter. When you're literally on national TV smearing things that happen in a business deal, and get this, it's not even a business deal. It's a contract. It's a contract, not even a contract. It's the first draft outline. Wendy said, before we sign this contract, can I walk through the restaurant and see it? And Mia had receipts. And Peter said, I'll get back to you, never got back to you. Would you sign receipts to, would you sign a contract to actually go and have, uh, to to uh, go and sign for a restaurant and a lease and deposit? And the guy that's doing all this is saying that you have to get 20% of the upfront cost, but you can't have any control of the business and no say, and they won't even let you do a walkthrough of the site. It sounds like a scam to me. And not only that, Mia, what are you talking about? He's a businessman extraordinaire. You mean the way Gordon built a chiropractic empire? And then we came uh, to find out that Gordon don't own anything. It's a family business that was already built before Gordon even met you. And Wendy was just playing CEO Barbie and badly might I act. Don't get out of here. Peter Thomas, where almost every business he's been in has failed. Cynthia Bailey, his wife that financed half that stuff, had to sue him to pay back her money that she gave. And you're trying to act like Wendy's a dumb one because she, <laughs> y'all, let's move on. Anyway, Peter is being weird and messy. Nene is a lot of things, but she ain't lie about Patricia Thompson, Thomas. He's coming for, I've never met a man that's so much in 
women's business. And by the say that, yeah, me and Wendy got beef. About what? Does she don't want to go into business with you? Y'all, let's move on. Okay, so then we go to evil incarnates, right? <laughs> the green-eyed demons room where they're sitting there. Robin's playing stupid because you know she just got to talk trash about something. Come on, there's only two towels and one large cloth. I mean, I'm just curious where all the towels are. Girl, is this the first time you've ever been in an Airbnb? If you don't go call the, if you don't go find the linen closet, shut up. Second of all, can Potomac stop this stupid plot of always getting houses where there's not enough rooms and then we're in Miami? Stop it. Ashley comes wandering in hey what's going on you know the weirdest thing happened what's weird ashley you know this guy used to date us in my dms ashley you acting like you don't know what instagram works like and you act like you don't know that you are setting um you are setting thirst traps with your tiktoks as believable as michael acting like you don't need a lawyer for your divorce. So anyway, she started talking about how, you know, with the divorce and how it's going and all this stuff. So, so she's talking about she saw, found her dream house, right? She found her dream house, but the tenants aren't going to be out till July. And she needs to be out in June. Now, this is what I want to say to everyone. And I was one of the first people to call the alarm back a year ago when I said, baby, I know gold digging gone wrong. I have eyes. I can say you are a sugar baby that's not getting any sugar. I saw Ashley's wardrobe from Rainbow, and you're like, well, maybe Ashley's not about the money. She's about houses. She's about cars. She ain't about nothing but looking like a damn fool. Because guess what happened? Well, y'all already know. Michael's becoming more, she's saying Michael's becoming more and more difficult and she doesn't know what's going on. And she's like, they're like, you're getting the divorce. And Ashley looks like, ugh. Ashley thought that she could sit up there and get the benefits of being Mrs. Michael Darby, right? And those pennies that he gives her, you can tell by the way Ashley like, lost her mind when she walked into that big house that she was thinking about buying, that Mike, that she was not staying in that penthouse in DC or wherever they live by choice. Michael literally got a young girl that was starstruck by his old man river love, right? And he's literally been running circles. Yo Ashley is a pick me to her heart. And she is definitely doing everything she can to make sure Michael makes a fool of her. And even that prenup, don't say what it thinks it does. Anyway, she talking about they can't, she can't be out from July. You can talk to Giselle and Robin about that. And that's why they were giving them a side eye. Ashley, Ashley, you can still close on the house, have it move in for July, all that stuff done and stay at your mama's house for four weeks, not even that, Ashley, you have a job on the Real Housewives of Potomac. You can afford a short-term Airbnb rental for one month and pay for movers to make two moves. Run from your house currently to storage and the second one from storage to your new house. That's why she's saying that she's not gonna go for it because Michael is acting up and now even that house isn't. And how much you wanna bet if she does get that house? If she does, that's gonna be all she gets in the divorce. But let's continue. Shut Right, no, she says that Michael's finding little things to argue with her about whether she can't find um, Dean's pull-ups or whether the other baby got milk in the refrigerator. And I said, do y'all have a nanny or was that all for show? Because why are he's fussing at you? I would be like, hello, call the nanny on your way to so-and-so's house for you to D. <laughs> Call the nanny, bye. So that's why I'm like, what, mm, Ashley? Oh, you didn't think Michael was gonna divorce you. You thought you found a cheat code with an old man that had money and status that you wanted and you just thought. And the sad thing is, Michael, uh, Ashley, had you listened to your uncle, you have been the one running circles around Michael, but you were so desperate to prove yourself to him. And now it has come to pass. You are the biggest dummy in the world. Michael applauds you, now get out of his house. Okay, so all the girls are getting ready to run to uh, for the night. And let me just tell you, man's the type of friend I hate. Man's the type of friend, honestly, I get it. You don't want Jacqueline to get a peach. I get it, because like I've been saying since the beginning, Mia is a pathological liar. And the more people that know you're a pathological liar, you don't want them around you, right? Because that's just gonna blow up your spot. But let me just say this. You are literally saying, you wanna swear? 
Be you stinking tonight? You shaved your legs with the same razor Gordon uses on his B. You are that friend that tries to embarrass your friends around other people. I wouldn't even be surprised even when Mia was single, Mia was trying to throw Jacqueline under the bus being like, oh, she's that friend that's just like, oh, could you be talking to everybody? You sure you don't talk to him? Mia, oh, she's not a good person. Anyway, they start getting ready for the festivities. We find out that Candace is not arriving till 10 p.m. tonight. I know Wendy was like, oh, I gotta deal with these people by myself. But y'all, mm, let's go. Okay, so then Ashley is literally recording a pantyless TikTok. Giselle sitting there egging her on to my I see your hustle. Giselle, if you see Ashley's hustle to get on TikTok, you need to go there too because baby, the well is getting dry and not even, but then what am I saying? She's gonna find a dirt bag on TikTok. Let's actually get into this. Actually cracked me up, right? Um, let's talk about Wendy and Karen. They sit down to talk. Wendy's like, listen, I just want to make sure that you are doing okay, right? Karen's like, I'm kind of sending mine. I will say this, right? She talks about how Wendy's saying, let's, I'm sorry, Karen is saying, Sharice is saying, let's have lunch, right? I'll say one thing. Car Karen is not new to this, but she's true to this. She knows that the reason Sharice was bought on is as a proxy for Giselle, and Sharice is desperate to sit down one-on-one -on -one with Karen so she can try to blow up Karen's spot. She keeps saying, I know all of Karen's business, but you want a chance to actually share it with her so you can have a scene, you can humiliate Karen, or you can do whatever. Karen is like, baby, I'm not giving you screen time. That's why every time Sharice enters the scene, she walks away, she gets quiet, she won't engage because she refuses to let Sharice drop whatever bomb that Sharice thinks that she's holding. It's really disappointing to me that Sharice is coming on. How are you coming on, being quiet, being boring, but when you open your mouth, you are trying to just cause mess and you just keep coming for Karen. I'm sick of it, right? Then we're back out on the patio. Mia, Mia is busy slandering Jacqueline. She come out, she needs this and that. First of all, Mia, you know who your friend is. And I will just say this, I'm the friend on vacation. I don't pack nothing. I ask, can we stop at a CVS, either on the way home from the airport, or I try to, I'm Googling where Walgreens is, when we land, I don't care if we're overseas or not, because it was hard enough for me to even get to the plane. No, I ain't going to get a travel size toothbrush. I'll get that where I go, right? And baby, where we go, where we go, if, if I can't find one, what am I saying? I can call the hotel and have them send me face cream, a razor, toothbrush, where are we staying that doesn't have these amenities or an Airbnb that doesn't have access to these amenities? So I am that friend, so I understand Jacqueline, but the fact that Mia is trying to embarrass her, she want toothbrush, she want this, she want razors. Mia is nobody's, mm, I hope, ja I, Jacqueline blew up her spot and let us know that that's what Mia's whole problem is with Wendy. Wendy is who Mia pretends to be. Mia don't even have a hot to PM right now, but she, but she wasn't fired from the business she built up yet. So she's still talking her mess, but let's actually talk about this, right? Listen, first of all, Ashley with the setup, well, does Wendy know we're going to Peter's restaurant? Why? Well, they have a business relationship. If they do have a business relationship, what do you care? about what, what if you guys are acting like Wendy is setting up a date, right? Did she tell Peter? This is a business relationship, not romantic. And it's weird the way they're all acting like Peter Thomas runs things, which according to, <laughs> according to all his business partners, the only thing he runs is whatever money he needs to run back in court from not paying his debts. But let's go into this, right? Mia, I heard Wendy and Peter has beef. What grown man is saying that they got beef with another person? Forget about woman, another person over a business deal and not a business deal where they owe you money, but a business deal that you are trying to get them to come into. But get this also, I well, Peter told me that Wendy did some research and acted like she tried to know something. Do you understand that Wendy's not asking 
Peter for a date. Do you understand that when you are interested in going into business and you want to go into business with people you think can help the business grow, you actually do try to find ways to connect with them so you can forge some type of relationship to talk about building a business. I realize Giselle don't got nothing don't got nothing except that podcast, but this is how business is done. So why are y'all trying to act like she tried to hook up on Tinder? It's weird, right? But you know what the weirdest thing is that Giselle exposed that Peter, right? Peter was trying to scam Wendy and got mad because the scam didn't work. Look at Giselle's words. I had to write this down. She said, Peter was like, you know, that girl you hang around, right? You mean Wendy, the business associate, the person you really were going to do business with, right? Um, you know, uh, what did he say? Uh, um, uh, Peter couldn't even remember her name. He had this ludicrous idea of going into business for a Nigerian restaurant. But you know what? I'm going to play along. But her idea seems fishy. I'm going to play along and just go along with whatever she wants. But, so you think it's a ludicrous idea. You think it will never work. You literally said that you're going to play along. But let's look at the way Peter played along. What did Peter do? Peter sat down told Wendy he needed 250,000 around, right? I'm being, that's right. About 250,000 to go into business that she needs to put up, but also told her in the same conversation that she was going to have no control, no say, but you said you already think it's a ludicrous idea. So if you really are a businessman, why are you furthering getting money from someone that you think is a ludicrous idea? You literally just admitted, Peter, that you plan to scam Wendy out of some money and you were laughing about it, bragging about it. And then when Wendy pulled back, because Wendy said, okay, so we need to sign for the lease. Can I do a walkthrough of the building to see the location? And Peter said, I will see and never got back to her. And you're complaining because she ain't signed. Yeah, you was planning to scam her out of some money. And I see how you scammed Cynthia out of money. You were planning on scamming Wendy out of money, but like most con artists, you got mad because Wendy is a professor. And not only that, Wendy got Eddie having her back being like, no, 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 no. Because Eddie is the businessman. Eddie is the lawyer. Eddie knows how these contracts go. And that's what Peter's mad about. You had Eddie in your corner. You know how contracts go. Hmm. So Eddie, being a husband he is, had your back. Peter's mad his scam, his little con fell apart. And now you're bad mouthing. Let anyone that's thinking about going into business for Peter Thompson, this is what is your future. He gonna look at it as ludicrous. He's gonna talk about you like a dog. Your business is gonna be all on the street. And if you don't, if you don't give into his con, he's gonna trash you. Y'all, let's move on. Thank you for showing us who he is. Anyway, they're all going to dinner now in cars. And Mia's doing the thing she always does. She talks to someone, she acts like she's on someone's side, and then she turns around and she throws them under the bus. Wendy, I love Wendy this season. Wendy stays. <laughs> is saying everything about say the word. Wendy's just sitting there like. The whole time and Mia's trying her best to block out Wendy's face, but you know it's getting on her nerves. First of all, I would want to say about me this about Mia. Mia is such a liar. The fact that Sharice is a storyline, Sharice was never planning on going to another hotel. Mia being like, okay, first of all, all the better hotels are sold out. Baby, this is Miami. The better hotels, they never sold out. And there's a lot of them. The Satai wasn't sold out. Shut up, Wendy. Shut up. The better hotel, the, the better hotels weren't sold out. Wendy, you know that. I know that. Production knows that. They never sold out in Miami Beach. It's the cheap ones that are always sold out because everybody wants to go on a budget. But if you're really ready, if you're really about that life and you're willing to drop between three and 5,000 on a hotel room, you can get a hotel room. Trust me on this one. Okay, so listen, and I mean three or five thousand a night, yet can get in a hotel room. Anyway, so they're talking, they're saying that Mia's like, you know, Sharice's heirs. Mia, you put a grown woman in a room with no bathroom. She has to ask permission for someone else in a house with no air conditioning. Anyway, again, Mia, mm, the great pretenders. Then they started having some asinine conversation about whether you go to the bathroom in front of people or not. Who cares? Who cares? Let's talk about why you guys are evil bees. It's loading. Let's go.
Okay, so we sit down to the dinner. Mia immediately tries to embarrass Jacqueline, being like, oh, uh, uh, they're like, oh, hookah, oh, you smoke hookah. Giselle, oh, she telling you, you. Now, I'll just say this. I don't smoke hookah, but my friends do. It's tobacco, right? Why you act like they sitting there with an opium pipe? What the hell? She's a grown woman. You do. And uh, Jacqueline was like, okay, you got one in your home. Mia stays trying to embarrass Jacqueline and it's weird because it makes Mia look just disgusting, right? Then we got talking about Ashley. Ashley is literally backpedaling, doing what she can. She literally started a rumor that Chris not only tried to talk to her girlfriend, but also smacked it up, flipped it, rub it down all over, right? rubbed up on her rubbed on her thigh Giselle spread the rumor and then Ashley was like did I say that no I even le I said he leaned in and then I showed them what they did to which I said this is what Ashley can't keep her live straight you know why because Ashley seems like she's always drunk I even think that that's why Ashley some days will be like I drinking today because she knows that when she's a little tipsy and that corona hasn't left her fingers right when she's a little tipsy she forgets what she said and she don't remember what she's supposed to say on Giselle's half Ashley got caught in another lie it's it's sick to me it's and you know here's the sick part and I don't mean to bring in the Monique stuff I know everybody wants to go what happened between Monique and Candace's relationship was tragic first of all you put your hands on me we ain't never gonna be friends in life so that's the first thing but also Monique, I don't think ever liked Candace. I think she was trying to sit at the cool girl table. Everybody thought Candace was some little person to be dismissed. Now cut to how many seasons later, you can love Candace or hate it. Mama is glowing gold. She's the only one that got, besides Wendy that is and Karen, that is book busy, got jobs and all that. Karen, Mia, and uh, Candace, but we all know between Candace and Karen, and what happened the way Karen took Monique's side because she was trying to get back at Giselle. This was some Game of Thrones stuff. That friendship is donezo. It's also probably why Candace took two steps back from Mia. I'm not Mia, from Wendy, but we'll get into that later. I do want to say this. They literally, with trying to do the same thing that they are doing now to Chris and Candace, they tried to do that to Monique and, and Shark Tales Chris. Candace actually told Karen, yo, tell Monique to watch her back. Monique got heads up, but for whatever reason, she turned on Candace and thought the woman that she knew was plotting to take down her marriage, she was trying to be friends with. Cut to noun, they're trying to do the same thing to Candace's marriage. The only thing is, they don't got nothing on Chris. Giselle played herself, made her look stupid. Ashley sitting up here making dumb lies. Ashley is a liar like Mia. Ugh, anyway, but not as annoying, right? Then you go to Peter Thomas tomorrow. She coming to my, I'm trying to do a Jamaican restaurant, a Jamaican re uh, accent, don't drag me. She come to my rest. Okay, fine, I'll stop. She's coming to my restaurant in my city. Peter, your name is not Kodak Black. I'm, well, your name is not Young Miami 305 or JT. I'm walking to any restaurant I want in Miami. Who are you? Second of all, why the Wendy if she hasn't gotten back to you in a business proposition, why does she, on a work trip, have to excuse herself from coming to your restaurant or to announce her? They're acting really weird. And it's weird all those dusty, busty, as Wendy said, you raggedy A-B is acting like Peter Thomas. Peter, don't co-mingle your funds. Peter, don't go into business. Peter, don't pay his debts. Tom Thomas, y'all sitting there bowing down, kissing rings. Like his name is Jeff Bezos and get out of here, right? Um, I love the way Wendy <laughs> told Cherise, wait, 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 you got, cause Cherise tried to start with Wendy, right? And Wendy has been running circles around everybody this season. And she has tried to be like, wait, you got all this energy for me, but Karen is sitting right here and you ain't saying nothing to her. Are you afraid of her? <laughs> And then that forced Cherise to confront Karen. Karen knows what she's doing. Cherise wants to sit down with her so she can tell all of Karen's business. And maybe Cherise does know some dirt about Karen, but Karen got a good point. B, we ain't talked for five years. Stop acting like you're the ghost of Christmas past and get your dusty, busty self out of here. Anyway, um, what else? Let's, let's move on to the fight scenes because the producers were dead wrong with that. 
it's really sick what they did and how they tried to glorify it. Let's move. You. No, not in a million kajillion. So Peter walks up there to say hi to everyone. And like I said, don't nobody ever do business with Peter Thompson. His rage is palatable. And when he's trying to be nice, oh, you got that Nigerian shrimp on your menu. And he's like, oh, that's actually been there for a while. <laughs> and get out of this. Mia gets up because she wants to be like, so let me get this straight. You know, this is how I know Mia is lying about being involved in any part of her husband's business. The fact that Mia doesn't even know how contracts are, the fact that Mia doesn't know how businesses run, the fact that when you join, especially for a restaurant venture or anything in the hospitality, you don't understand it. Also, Mia, you don't know what's in that contract. And the fact that you're acting like Peter Thomas, Thomas is somebody special, girl, you ain't been nowhere, don't know nothing. And you look and sound dumb and stupid. Gordon, come get Mia. Listen, Mia, if I'm put me back on the pole because baby just stop 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 let's move on Basically, mia tried to play can uh wendy and you know she's selling candles baby so is karen huger mia you were just selling candles that's how you came on the real housewives of atlanta about yeah i mean real housewives of potomac i'm booked and busy remember when you stole that candle it was supposed to be for dv awareness in france and you tried to act like you made it yourself you came into this game selling candles mia let's not but Mia don't know nothing about business you don't know that candles can be a multi-billion dollar company ask jackie Ina. ask the grand dame all right and now she wants to get to the restaurant business okay and what's the laugh mia what are you doing except for sitting here faking that gordon ain't pull you off of a pole pole and let you play ceo barbie and also peter thomas giggling along peter mm, god don't like ugly well then mia comes back to the table and she's just like so and you know she's like oh i'm mad because apparently peter's such a close family friend that he's the first one to hold her daughter outside of her father. Mia just be making up lies. How much you want that she just met Peter this season? Maybe last, actually, yeah, why they were filming for last season because Mia's a liar. Talking about, and you didn't tell Peter you were coming. So when he was like, baby, I, Peter is not my man. I don't gotta tell him where I'm going anywhere, 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 any time, right? So then, um, uh, 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 so then this blows my mind. Robin's like, hell, oh, stop doing this. Robin has always been a mean girl with Giselle, but she knows her limitations and that's why she hides behind Giselle, right? But she's just as mean, just as conniving, just as like whatever. She's mad that Wendy exposed her for being thing one and thing two. Another reason I think that Robin is coming so hard at Wendy, and I'll be the first one to say it. Robin said she was diagnosed with ADHD and she actually takes Adderall. I think Robin has Adderall rage. I've seen it before. Lots of friends at college. Think about it. I think Robin has Adderall rage. If you don't know, Adderall um, messes with your, what's the thyroid? No, not your thyroid, adrenaline gland. It pumps your adrenaline gland. And one of the side effects of Adderall is it'll put you in fight or flight reflex. Some people are flight. Whenever they get in fight or flight mode, they scurry, they hide. I don't mean they're weak. It's just the way you go. Some people flight or flight. Robin is fight, fight, fight. Even when Robin, before she was on Adderall, she was always quick to try to physically solve something. And this hostility, this anger, the way she's always sitting on 10, it, it reminds me of Adderall rage. Robin, you need to tell your doctor to lower your doses because it's too much. It's too much. It's too much. Anyway, me and sister in lies and said, as a black woman, I'm the only black woman and a boardroom CEO. Mia stays in her fantasy island. Mia, your business is a family owned and family run business. What non-black people are at your board meeting? Hmm? Tell me, tell me. Cause you said it was owned by Gordon and his family. Um, there are other black people also sitting at the board of the right. And actually Mia's lying cause baby, you got fired. You were never at the CEO. You were never at the board of directors thing. You were never at any of this stuff. And let me just say this, cause I want to actually, 
Wendy is on CNN. She is on Fox News, right? Wendy is the first and youngest black woman, I'm sorry, a, a Nigerian American professor in the number seventh ranked college in America. The number seven, Stanford, Harvard. She is, uh, John Hopkins is ranked higher than Cornell. You have to be joking. And y'all trying to act like one, Wendy don't got any money, Wendy's broke. Giselle, Wendy got more money than you and Robin combined, even with your Potomac and reasonable, she, reasonably shady podcast. She got more money than both of y'all combined. As a matter of fact, throw Ashley in because Michael done cut Ashley off. She got more money from her own jobs than Robin, Ashley, and Giselle combined. You throw Eddie in, baby, they making more money than Robin, Ashley, Giselle, and um, Mia, because Mia's unemployed now, combined. Y'all gonna stop playing with Wendy, and I'm sick of the masses acting like John Hopkins University is some community college. No shade to anybody that teaches at community college. That's a huge accomplishment too. But ask the people that know, you are literally the youngest theme, black theme, woman professor in a, top, in a top 10 American college with worldwide acclaim. Y'all, let's get back into this because we're going to talk about the colorism jumping off. Now, let's talk about the disgusting, vile, childhood, mean girl, cruel thing. Mia set out to humiliate Wendy because all of them are too stupid to know how business contracts go and too stupid to know that Peter's the weirdo, Peter's the wrong one, and Peter's the con artist in the situation. When they thought that Mia was, when Wendy was about to be humiliated, Robin pulled out her phone to capture the humiliation because she was gonna love it. When things went quickly left because Wendy can run, swim, pirouette on those fools, right? When that happened, all of a sudden, you're being antagonistic. You need to stop. You. They literally made excuses on why Whip Mia was justified in throwing a drink in Wendy's face, right? Throwing a drink in Wendy's face. Robinson, you're antagonistic. You're disgusting. You're this, you're that. It was okay. Even, 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 even Ashley. Couldn't rock with that and said, yo, that is shots fired. Someone throwing a drink in someone's face. You really sat there and were laughing because you thought me, Wendy was about to get humiliated, but Wendy flipped that on your mess. Mia tried to start a fight, stood up, did everything, fingers in the face. It was all fun and games, right? It was cute. Well, and then Giselle trying to egg Wendy on to throw the martini in her face to do this, to do that. Man. Robin ain't this. And Robin need to be concerned about what's going on with Rob, uh, Rob, what's going on with Juan. But I'll tell you what, I see evil. Who knows what evil lies in the, the hearts of men. How does that make sense? It didn't, but that's just the way I feel. That was just some, no, that was some disgusting, vile mess. And I don't appreciate the way that, that when Mia was acting up, they just held her. But when Wendy was acting up, he manhandled her and pulled her over there. Let me just say, they talk about the colorism that happens in Potomac. I remember Ashley doing that thing, being like, okay, you guys, first of all, I just want you to know I'm not a colorist. Ashley, shut up. It's not the point of whether you have a beef, right? It's the way you classify, you're aggressive, you're hostile, you're antagonistic, right? Robin and Giselle thought that they could do the same thing to Wendy. Wendy better not go nowhere. I love Wendy there. And the fact that it is always okay and the producers delighted and going slow motion with the drink hitting her, like that was funny. What was funny about that? What was cute about it? This is exactly colorism. It's funny. They deserved it. Let's slow mo and go in. When the dark people a darker complexion, want to be let's talk to them like they're animals they're savage they're this but you know the the lighter skin people let's give them a good edit no matter what they say they're the authority robin is a colorist she's mad that wendy got the best of her and she got robin and giselle are colorists they literally are on some pretty girl mean girl stuff the only problem is like karen said baby you are hard 40. that privilege is over but they are colorists you do think me is below you and you're mad you're mad you're mad i'm sorry not mia wendy and you're mad you can't 
humble Wendy. And you're mad. And when you thought she was about to be humbled and humiliated, you were sitting right there taping it like a schoolyard bully. Robin, you ain't ish. And I'm giving and all I'm giving a call. Go, 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 go. To all Ron's mistresses or whoever else, everything wrong. You know what? I don't even, yeah, I will say it. Robin, you deserve what you got. And your misery, your misery, your misery from Juan not choosing you and the marriage falling apart and that pretty privilege and the colorism is supposed to put you at the top of the heap for the man you wanted, he still ain't want you. You now want to make it Wendy's problem because exceptions need to be made for you, mama, right? You guys are special. You guys are rare. How dare a woman like Wendy, who you have been socialized through the men and women in your life to let you know that a woman like Wendy is below you and will always be below you in the social hierarchy. It's not just right there looking at you, but she is above you. She is more desirable. She got a better body, better job, more loving husband, cute kids. She got everything that you were promised because of your privilege that just skin promised you. Wendy got it and you can't stand it. Y'all, good for Wendy, but the fact that the, even the producers are delighting in her being dehumanized and treated less than. Tell me any, you know what? Let's move on, let's move on. And the weird part is, first of all, let's get that. You called her a crater face B. You called her, a ra Wendy called me a, a crater face B a raggedy bee and read her up and down so you and your husband can do all the threesome foursomes you want that'll happen over here and you could go pierce peter thompson's feet i ain't doing it right all that stuff came out and everybody was sitting there acting like wendy was stupid this woman literally had a drink thrown in her face on national tv the ultimate sign of disrespect the only thing wendy could have did worse was spit on her and y'all trying to act like it's your words wendy you're so antagonistic I can't wait till Candace throat joins this party. Oh my God, they are just so disgusting. Even Ashley was like, stop playing, stop playing. You know what Mia did was, put it like this, in a court of law, that drink in her face would have been enough to prove self-defense, no matter what she did. And the fact that they were taping it, because they thought Wendy was about to be humiliated. And even the fact that Robin was only taping Wendy because you wanted to be able to put her up on the summer ground street and show the aggressive, hostile, dark-skinned woman. Robin, you ain't ish. Neither are you, Giselle. Neither are you, Mia. Let me tell you something. Like, you'll find racism don't get you far and neither does colorism. But you about to find out. You, you gonna learn. You gonna learn this season. So then, again, Mia is allowed to play soft and fragile. You came to the table with the mess. You started the mess. You escalated it to violence. If you felt like Wendy's words were attacking you, you responded with actual physical attack and then got mad that Wendy was a classy one and used her words and then Giselle and Robin hovered around her because Wendy's the fragile, I'm sorry, Mia's the fragile one. Mia's the one that needs things. It's your trip and we're gonna leave her. Such liars, and I'm glad Wendy called her out. When it was Monique, you had a problem with it. When it was Monique, you needed security. But when is somebody doing it to me? Now all of a sudden, y'all, they ain't ish. You can say what you want. I'm gonna be reviewing this every week since I am invested. I know people were talking trash about, oh, now people wanna get involved in Pot Potomac. That's right, baby, I'm late to the party, but baby, I'm bringing, I'm wait late to the party, but baby, I'm bringing snacks with me. So I assume I'm gonna be welcome. Anyway, y'all, let me know what you think in the comments. Don't forget to hit uh, uh, the, me, Grace, and Layla. All right, I'm seven. Um, I'm, I'm seven. Um, this week for the Real Housewives of Potomac recap, it's going to be on live. Check it out. I think it's going to be on Grace's channel this week. Go ahead and check it out 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye.